Okay, in this video I want to discuss the kinetic energy of a gas sample. Uh, recall that kinetic molecular theory, one of the postulates, uh, says that kinetic energy of a gas sample is proportional to the temperature in kelvins. That was, I believe, the third postulate um, that I discussed in the previous video. And so what that means is that if you do not vary the temperature, and let's say you have two gas samples, maybe you have a hydrogen gas sample, you have an oxygen gas sample, and if the um, gases are both maintained at the same temperature, just for the sake of argument, let's put a number to that, um, maybe both of them are being uh, maintained at 25 degrees Celsius, then the kinetic energy of the hydrogen gas is going to be equal to the kinetic energy of the oxygen gas, provided both of those are maintained at the same temperature. What does this mean? This means that half mv square for hydrogen is going to be equal to half mv square. Recall the way that you calculate the kinetic energy, the value for that is half times mass times square of the velocity of the particle of a moving body from physics, that's the general formula. Now, if you look at the periodic table, um, you would see that mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole, and I say it's 32 because the atomic mass of oxygen is 16, and right now this oxygen is present as a diatomic O2 molecule, which is why 2 times 16 is 32. Likewise, if you look at the mass of hydrogen, since it's diat diatomic, um, the mass is going to be 2 grams per mole. In other words, um, hydrogen weighs significantly lesser as compared to oxygen. It's, a, it's actually about 16 folds lesser in mass um, as compared to oxygen. Well, what does that mean? If the kinetic energy of hydrogen has to be equal to kinetic energy of oxygen, don't you think that the velocity of hydrogen will have to be more than the velocity of oxygen. And specifically in this case, since there is a factor of 16 here, essentially one can say that um, velocity of hydrogen will have to be four times, will have to be, there should be an equal, let's just remove that, um, will have to be four times the velocity of oxygen um, it, specifically for this particular case because there is a factor of square. Um, so for kinetic energies to be the same, um, and if you have two given samples of gases, which by the way are being maintained at the same temperature, um, a lighter particle will travel faster than the heavier ones. Now, in case of kinetic molecular theory, we define um, the velocity as what is called as the URMS, which is defined as the root mean square velocity. So root mean square. That means, let's say you have five particles um, in a gas sample. Let's say we have five particles. And uh, if you know the velocities of those, square of the velocities, you take the mean of all of those and you find out the square root and that will give you the root mean square velocity, which is, one can say, a special type of an average. I wouldn't say that it is exactly the uh, same as the average uh, velocity, but one could say that it is a special kind of average. Now, for any average uh, kinetic energy for a given sample, let's say you have a mole of sample, if you have, let's say, a mole of a gas, which contains Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 um, molecules of the gas, one can say that the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy, average kinetic energy, is going to be equal to half times mass of each particle, and since we know that there's Avogadro's number, 
I'm going to multiply that um, with the mass um, times the average um, the square of the average velocity that in general will give you the kinetic energy of any given system now we also know we also know that kinetic energy is proportional to uh, the temperature turns out this relationship between the average kinetic energy and the temperature in Kelvin is that average kinetic energy is equal to 3 divided by 2 times RT so 3 times RT by 2 that gives you the specific relationship between the kinetic energy the average kinetic energy and the temperature in Kelvin how we get that uh, relationship is beyond the scope of this course but just take it for granted for now that that is how it is calculated so can I say if this is equation one and this is equation two um, if you're talking about the kinetic energy the same kinetic energy I could say that 3 over 2 RT is equal to half times mass of the particles times the Avogadro's number times the square of the average speed 2 and 2 will cancel off and one can say 3 RT divided by M times the Avogadro's number in the denominator is equal to U square, U bar square. If I take the square root of both sides, one can say that square root of 3 RT over M times NA is going to be equal to square root of squares of velocities and the average of that. Don't you think that is what we have defined the root mean square velocity as? Um, so one can say from here that the root mean square velocity is proportional to the temperature and inversely proportional to given mass of particle times the number of particles the Avogadro's number is nothing but the molar mass so one can say very safely that URMS is equal to square root of 3 times RT divided by capital M where capital M is the molar mass of the sample molar mass of the sample and um, um, R is the gas constant in this specific case the value of gas constant is going to be different than what we have used in the past in this case we are going to use the value of R as 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin temperature is going to be in Kelvin so that's uh, temperature that will be written in Kelvin um, and the molar mass that will be in kilograms per mole so what is specific in this case is that the molar mass capital M is going to be in kilograms per per mole and let me show you um, why is it that we need those specific uh, units alright so we said that for our URMS as 3RT over capital M and I'm saying the capital M is supposed to be in kilograms per mole R is written as 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin the temperature is of course written in Kelvin so the Kelvin and Kelvin can get cancelled the per mole and per mole can get cancelled um, joules turns out that is a unit for work and so that means it's Newton times meters Newton is mass times acceleration due to gravity and so mass is in kilograms times acceleration is meter per second square per second square times square 
kilogram kilogram cancelled what you would get would be meter square over second square square root of that will be just meter over second which will be the correct units for velocity okay so if it's true that the root mean square velocity is equal to square root of 3rt over capital m which is the molar mass in kilograms per mole uh, what does that mean? That means that given at a given temperature, at constant at constant temperature, since the 3R component is a constant as well, one would be able to say that the root mean square velocity is inversely proportional to the molar mass. What does that mean? That means if you have a heavier gas, a heavier gas, that's going to travel a lot slower as compared to uh, a lighter gas. A lighter gas. So lighter gases will move faster, heavier gases will move slower. So at any given point of time, let's say you were comparing helium to perhaps neon to perhaps xenon, one would be able to say that provided the temperature is constant and maintained, um, the velocity of xenon is going to be least, uh, the velocity of helium is going to be maximum. So let's see if, uh, if we can apply that on, on a question, if we can calculate that. So the question here that I want to discuss is the same as um, what's in the PowerPoint where we are interested in determining the velocity of helium atoms and the velocity of neon atoms at 25 degrees Celsius. All you have to do is use the formula. The formula is URMS is equal to square root of 3RT over capital M. The temperature is given in 25 degrees Celsius. We will simply add 37, I'm sorry, 273 to 25, that will give me 298 Kelvin. That is the temperature in Kelvin. Now, if you were to think about the mass of helium, recall from the periodic table, it is the second element which has the atomic mass of four. So four grams of helium would be contained in one mole of, of uh, helium. And if you were to convert that into, into kilograms, you would say that, well, 1,000 grams make a kilogram. And so the grams of helium and the grams is going to cancel off. And one can safely say that 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilogram per mole is what we are looking at for the mass of helium. Likewise, for the mass of neon, for the mass of neon, uh, neon is the tenth element, and I'm looking at the periodic table, it's 20 grams per mole and if you do the same thing for neon you would be able to say thousand grams you would be able to say that two times ten to the power of negative two um, kilograms per mole kilograms per mole is the mass of neon so I'm going to plug both of these into the root mean square formula, one can say square root of 3 times 8.314 times 298, divide that by 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And when you do the same thing for neon, you would say 3 times 8.314 times 298 divided that by 2 times 10 to the power of 
negative 2. And now solve. So when you work on the numerator, it comes out to be 7, 4, 3, 2.716. I'm going to divide that by 4 times 10 to the negative 3. And then we'll take a square root of that. And that gives me square root of 1858179, which when you hit on your calculator is right now giving me 1363.15. It's a velocity we are calculating, so that's meter per second are the units. If I do the same thing for the case of neon, I get a 192.8. Meters per second. So you can hopefully see that if your gas atoms are lighter, the velocity is going to be a lot higher as compared to when you have heavier gas atoms.